Good evening, everyone. I'm John Hain. This is the Overcoming Class with John Hain. Hope you're all having a blessed start of your week. I know it's Monday. How can it be blessed? It's Monday, right? Yeah, right, man. Every day of the week can be blessed. I hope you all are having a good time. Enjoying your life. Ah, uh, God has blessed us with it. So I'm going to open us up in prayer. Heavenly Father, I just pray that whatever comes out of my mouth tonight may touch some souls out there and may open up some hearts, may get some minds stirring, may get some feelings going around just so you can get them feelings just lifted up. Maybe they're down, maybe they need lifted. Just stir it up. Let the Holy Spirit stir them up tonight. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. So... I was trying to figure out what I wanted to talk about on my overcoming. And I started thinking, the pastor, we, uh, Friday night was awesome. The deeper service was awesome. And there was one thing the pastor said there that he said, shine in our light. And most people think we shine our light. And really it's God shining his light through us. And I think that's where we get misinterpreted going through life and how we're supposed to share the gospel and everything else. And... We tend to think that we need to fix the people or, or we have to do it. And, and really, it's God doing it through us. And we're like a walking testimony. And that, that's one thing that came up in my So overcoming on how to share the gospel in the right way and understanding what we need to overcome and how to understand what we're doing when we're sharing the gospel. And I have three scriptures here that I will be going over. Um... I am a guy that just likes to wing it, so I am going to be just probably winging it most of the time, too. But uh, the Great Commission says go out and create disciples. Go. So it's on uh, Matthew 28, and it's going to be 19 and 20, if you guys want to check it out or save it or do whatever you want to do. It says, Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son of the, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And I am with you always, even to the end of age. And the reason why I stopped every minute God was talking to me, and if you guys don't understand that, like, one of these days I'm going to have to like, walk you through my process of how God speaks to me right when I'm moving and everything else. That makes it awesome. I think... I'm doing this at home tonight. I think I can hear the carpet scrubber going right now. Or no, that's the fire whistles. It wasn't the carpet scrubber. But, uh, so, if you guys can hear that fire whistle, that's going to annoy me so bad. But it says, preserve all things that I have commanded you. So think about that, Link. That's what he wants us to show them. That's what he, how he wants us to create these disciples. Teach them and preserve all the things that I have commanded you. So what, really to dig that part, all right, what has God shown you? What has Jesus walked you through? And that's how we're supposed to be shown. That's how we're supposed to be creating disciples is through the way we live, through what we got through, how Jesus got us through that and everything else. And then we get to show them the truth. Like, it's not that I get to come there and say, Dave, you went through depression? Yeah, so did I. I can tell you how I got out of it. It may not work for you, but I do have a way that you can get out of it. And it's called the Bible, and it's called getting closer to God and accepting the Lord as your Lord and your Savior and letting Him in your life to change your life so you don't have to go through that kind of stuff. And the more that I went through all that kind of stuff and everything else, like, I thought I had to do this all on my own, and I, I was trying to figure it out, and I couldn't figure it out. And nobody ever showed me who Jesus was. What I always seen was church people were hypocrites and everything else. That's all I ever heard out there. And I was like, well, I ain't going to them guys, man. If they're like that, I'm going to have to change my whole life. Yeah, I'm going to have to change. I'm going to have to change. But God meets you right where you're at and everything else. So when we're out there creating disciples and we're out there trying to show, God says just what I showed you pretty much is what you need to be doing. Because we can't transmit nothing we don't got. If we're out there trying to preach the Bible and we haven't even read the Bible, you are going to hurt a lot of people. And you might push a lot of people away. So I'm telling you guys to get in there, learn the truth, see what God, how God places it on your life, and say, all right, this is how God places it on my life. Don't tell them that's how they have to do it. No, once they get in the Bible and they read it and everything else, learn, learn how to do their things and how to get out of their stuff and everything else. So that was, that was Matthew's Great Commission. 
Uh, Matthew 28, 19 and 20. And as I'm going through here, I'm going through my stuff too, so give me a minute to go back and forth. And uh, this is my first time trying to do this uh, overcoming class at my house. And it kind of feels weird, but it's kind of awesome too. But no, like I said, on Friday night at the sex service, the pastor was talking about how we shine our light and everything else, and how it's not us shining our light, it's God shining it through us, and how we live our life, too. And, our, and he was talking about the worship, like everybody thinks worship and is singing and everything else. No, it's the worship and how we live our life. And you can kind of, you, you just did a little reel on it, I think, I don't know, about five minutes ago. So you guys can check that out, too. Check out all the little videos on there, you'll love them. But, uh, so I was talking about how in uh, the Great Commission, it says how He commanded us, like what He told us to do, and how we're supposed to share that, and that's how we're supposed to make disciples. And my life may be different than your life. Like, I was not a spoiled, rotten kid. I did not, I grew up, I moved out when I was 12 years old. I was grown. At the age of 12, I was full born alcoholic. Lived on the streets and everything else. So I got the hard knocks. And that's how I got it. That don't mean the next person beside me, hey, David, how are you? And that means the next person beside me needs to get the hard knocks. And it means, because that's what, if we put ourselves into that situation and we're trying to fix them, it's us trying to do it, not God doing it. And what we have to do is get them to see, like, listen, this is how Jesus changed me. This is how Jesus saved my life. And as we show them that, that's how we're creating disciples. And then they're going to want to, all right, what do you have? Where, where are you getting this from? What are you doing? How come you're so happy all the time? Where are you getting that peace and joy from? I was one miserable person. I'm telling you that right now. And uh, so I'm going to go to John 13, 34 through 35 right now because this is another thing that popped out. I'm going to try to keep on tying this together because I want to get to the scripture and then I can show you guys how, I go, how God landed on me to bring it all through to you guys. Um, and you guys can do with this whatever you want. And that's what it comes down to. Again, I love... The main thing I love to teach about is you have a choice. You have a choice to take everything that you hear, everything that you were taught, everything that you've ever been through. You have a choice to make that change. You have the choice to do whatever, whatever you want. You can either do it the bad way, you can do it the right way, you can do whatever you want to do with it. It's your own decision. God gives us that free will. And that's the biggest thing that you guys got to understand. Well, I'm doing this for the Lord and everything. And like I want this done for me, and it don't work that way. All we're doing is going through life, and we're doing the best that we can for the Lord, because we're all sinners, we're all broken, we're all here just for a moment. And you have the choice to choose between heaven and hell. Romans ten nine. If you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, and you believe in your heart that God has risen him from the dead, you will be saved. Romans ten nine. I cannot. That's if you can get that, you're going to get on this path. Am I telling you that it's going to be a hard path, the easy path, whatever? God can do whatever. God is a miracle worker. God can. If we put God in a box, I mean, man, I've seen healings. I've seen miracles happen. I sat with people. I did everything. Like, all that. That's me. That's me showing you, like, hey, this is how God discipled me. This is how Jesus showed me the way. And this is how I can give it back to you. I can't come to your house and say, listen, dude, you need to do this to get that way and get that right that way or you're going to hell, da 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 Yes, we can see that. Somebody would have told me back in the day when I was a drunken alcoholic, like, hey, you're going to hell? Yeah, buddy, let's go. There's going to be a party down there. No, I needed somebody to walk into my life saying, hey, dude, I screw up too. I'm a sinner, man. I go through life and it sucks. I've been beat up. I've been pushed down. And I didn't have nowhere else to turn. And the last person I had to turn to was Jesus Christ. And I was like, man, all right, let me get this dude a try. Like, because I went through life, if there was a person out there that could have fixed me, I probably could have got fixed. Even myself. I'm a person. I couldn't even fix myself, let alone have somebody else fix me. The only person that could fix me was Jesus himself. Because my thinking and everything else of this world, none of my life and everything else was so far down that I couldn't even, I couldn't even comprehend what this world was living. I'd rather die. I, I mean, I took a car off cliff and everything else. But that, all right, back to John 13, where was I now? Uh, if I'm talking too fast for you, I'm sorry. I just get excited. I love the Lord with all my heart and my mind and my soul. And that's another thing, too. That, that's going to be on a different thing, too. My soul. What is your soul? You love God with all your heart and all your mind. I mean, that's easy. That mind, heart, uh, your soul. What's your soul? What's your soul? Figure it out. 
Um, so where was I going with this? 13, John 13, 34 to 35. And a new commandment I give to you, that you love one another. Lost his spot. You love one another as I loved you, that you also love one another. By this, all will know that you are my disciple, if you have love for one another. So let's think about that a minute. Do I have to love you by giving you a whole bunch of money? Do I have to love you by paying your bills? Do I have to love you to beat you up and say, hey, you're screwing up? Do I have to love you? I don't know. How else can we love somebody? We can love somebody by... Ah, do I have to love you by calling you every day? Do I have to love you by... Whatever. Whatever people think that you have to love. We have to love the way that Jesus loves. You did, and, and when we look at that that way, sometimes we go into our own love and the way that we think we have to love that person. Or the way that we feel like, hey, if I go into this, this person going to know I love them. And it's about the way Jesus loves them. And really, we'll never be able to love the way that Jesus loved because it was unconditionally. So how do we love them? We give them the truth. We tell them to get in the Bible and read. We show them how, hey, this is what I went through. This is my kind of love that I received from Him. If you want that kind of love, here it is. We don't go and say, hey, what you're doing wrong, you're wrong, like you're on this, you're... No, I, I love you, but I know myself, I can't be part of this, or... I can't walk you through this. I can't be beside you on this or whatever. However, but here, Jesus can. He can walk through you like right here it is in red, black and white and red. And you can learn it real quick. Like all you have to do is pick it up and you can change your life right away. And I can walk you through like the stuff that I went through and say, hey, this is how I went through it once again. And then you get to make that choice. I can't tell you what to do. I can't. But I, I can tell you what, the Holy Spirit's going to convict you once you start feeling these kind of things. And convict you, what I mean, He can love you. He can make you feel uncomfortable. He can make you do a lot of things. Only if you let Him in. Like, well, like again, we have to have, we have our own free will. You need to let Him in, or you don't let Him in. Sometimes I don't like to let Him in when I'm mad, man. I don't want to let the Holy Spirit in when I'm mad. When I'm mad, I'm being upset. Let me be mad for a minute. And then I go, my, my, I have to go, God, I'm sorry, dude. Like, let the Holy Spirit come in here and let me, you know, give me the peace, give me the joy back. I hate that miserableness. Like, and then we get in that. So, uh, I love living with the Lord. I love letting the Holy Spirit in. I love arguing with the Lord, too, a lot. Uh, I probably do that probably more than I just surrender to them the way that I'm supposed to. Um, it's getting better as I get older. Because <laughs> uh, you don't like to deal with that miserable stuff as much as you used to when you were younger. And as you go through life and you learn that joy and that peace, you want more of that. And, you want, and that's what, and when people see that, they want more of that too. Uh, and the only way to get that again is through by reading the scriptures and getting in the book. And it's not by uh, the human beings that are on this world. It's by getting that relationship with God and with Jesus to show you how to live your life with that peace and joy. But uh, now I'm going to go to Galatians uh, 2.20. Once I find it here. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live but Christ that lives within me. I now live, I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave Himself for me. So, Jesus Christ gave Himself for us. Ain't that awesome? If that doesn't fire you up, I don't know what's going to. But, the way that that's going to fire you up and the way that that's going to have to fire you up is if you really believe that He gave His life for you and again back to Romans 10-9. Uh, so, 
We were talking about making disciples. That's how this whole thing started. If you guys are just tuning in late, don't know what's going on, uh, and how we're supposed to create disciples and how we go through life and we think that we have to help somebody the, the way that we think they need to be helped or the way that we feel like, hey, if you change this, it's going to change your life. Or, hey, if you do this, it's... God puts us in every situation that we go through. And I was talking a little bit about my story and everything else and how I was overcoming it because it's called overcoming class and John Hay. I'm John Hay. Uh, so, in, in the way that we live our life and... As we go through life, we're going to have our ups and downs and everything else, and we're going to turn to people and everything. And they're probably not going to be able to help us unless we take the suggestions or the opinions that they give you. But the create disciples, it says in there about how Jesus, what he commanded us to do, and like what we went through in our life, and show them um, as we go through life on what we did, like what we went through, and how we started that relationship. Because that's all we can get back to. And then that should lead them to the Bible. If we cannot lead them to the Bible, we're leading them by us, and we're not supposed to be. They're not supposed to be led by us, and we're not supposed to be living their life for them either. And that's 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 their relationship between Jesus and them, which was to come together as fellowship and have the good times together, so they get to see that in us and to love one another, so that we can show them like, hey, this is what it's all about. And then whenever they ask, hey, how did you do this? Well, I let Jesus into my life, and I started reading the Bible, and I started seeing things in a different way. I let God come in. I let the Holy Spirit move. And so as that, like I said Friday night, too, about the pastor speaking, I, it really kind of, it, it didn't hit home. I knew what it was like, but it really, God laid it on me, like, really pinpoint on this, because this is where most people get lost. And I know it's like really nice to go out there and be like, yeah, I can help you. I'm going to help you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to do this and everything. And that's fine. All that's fine. Go out there and pray and do whatever you want. But make sure it's being led by the Holy Spirit. Make sure you're showing the Spirit of God. Make sure that you're not saying, oh, well, if you just go get a job, you can have some more money and you've got to... Yeah, some people we like to think that way, but we don't know what they're going through. Like, oh, what a bum, man. If they would just get a job. No. It's like, all right, show them. Like, bring them to your house and say, look, like, my house is paid for. My bills are taken care of. Well, how you Oh, God lets me do it. God lets me do have this. God lets me. Jesus, because I want Jesus in my life, I get to sleep underneath the roof. I mean, I can remember sleeping in dugouts and underneath porches and everything else. But once I let the Lord in, things started changing. I started changing. I started becoming new. I was a new person. The old started going away. And as the old started going away, life started getting better. That miserableness, all that worryingness, like, and everything else that comes along with life in general. It's like, man, can you have a good life the whole entire... Yeah, you really can if you choose to. And that's where it comes down to a choice again. But, like, I mean, uh, some people disagree with me. Like, no way. It, you're always going to have a bad day. One of them days. Yeah, if you choose to have a bad day, you can take a good and bad day and turn it into a good day if you want to right away. What it is, we don't want to right away because we're like, oh, this is normal. This is the way the world is. No, we're set apart from this world. We can be absolutely, totally different than this world. And if we believe with all of our heart and all of our mind and all of our soul, we can change that day instantly if we ask the Holy Spirit to come in. And uh, go out and do something for somebody else. You'll see, I'm telling you, if people just... I, I used to sit with the bums and everything else when I was a bum, but I was stuck down in Pittsburgh for like three months when I was creamy, but I was also drunk too, so... Uh, I was a full born alcoholic, I think I turned that back. And when I was down with the bottoms, I was talking to them. I said, why do you guys live like this? And they said, it's just freedom. And I'm thinking, wow, dude, you got a point. And then I was like, I'm going to Mississippi River, and I'm going to live down there with the bums. Because I wanted that freedom. I, mean, I wanted just to be free, just to be able to do whatever I wanted to do, to be able to, just to be me. But it was me in a fleshly desire. And then they told me about this Jesus guy that I could be free with. I'm like, yeah, right there. You're crazy. And uh, when I first come to God, it wasn't it wasn't with Jesus. It was through a, uh, a program. And uh, they told me, just pick a higher power. And I was like, all right, dude, I'm going to pick a Christmas tree, a light bulb, and everything else. And uh, set up and pick an ocean. And I started thinking that light bulb can break, that tree can burn up, the ocean can dry up. And then I said, all right, I'm going to take Mary Poppins, and I'm going to run with that one. I did. I took Mary Poppins. I ran with that one. Yes, my wife found that. I don't know how my wife put up with me these many years. But, uh, so I did that, and then uh, 
They said, well, isn't something greater than yourself? And I'm thinking, there ain't nobody or nothing out there greater than me. I'm the only person. It's me. And then I figured out I was selfish, self-centered. I was pride, ego, stick, stick, like, I mean, I was just full of it all. Like, I'd walk around pretending like I was happy and I was so miserable. I was dying on the inside. And I hated life. Like, I wanted to die. Uh, suicide was the best thought, so I tried to figure out the best way to do it without making a mess. So I took a car off the cliff the one night because I beat it up and I was like, man, I'm going to kill two birds in one stand. I won't get yelled at by my girlfriend, my wife at the time. Or my girlfriend at the time is now my wife. So it would have been my girlfriend, but she's my wife now. But I said, maybe she won't have to yell at me for my car. So I'll just take off the cliff and get rid of both and like, nobody will ever. So that didn't work out. But, uh, so she still put up with me. I don't know how that's possible, but off her down back on to where we were. Um, so that freedom I was looking for, and that, that's how I lived my life when I was a drunk. I, I didn't care about this world. I didn't care about this anything in this world. And so they had me come find this higher power greater myself. And then I kept on hearing them say something about God, and I was like, dude, I hate God. Like, if there was a God, I wouldn't have to go through what I went through when I was growing up. I wouldn't have to go through all the beatings. I wouldn't have to go through all the stuff that I went through. And I, I, I can see here, I can tell you how much stuff I went through and how bad it was really and everything else, but that's just... That's just part of the testimony and growing. And that's how God wants us to show that. Like, and that's why when we go out and create disciples, it's not about, about how to fix them. It's about showing them, like, hey, this is what I walked through. This is what I went through. And this is how I got out of it. So that's what I'm hoping that this video reaches out there and to share your story with one, somebody out there whenever you're walking around and saying, hey, you can have this too. You can grow out of this miserableness. I can, they can have me... They had me schizophrenic, bipolar, self-mutilation, suicidal, homicidal, anxiety, depression, uh, self-mutilation because I got tattoos, that's how they got me for self-mutilation. Um, they had me with so much stuff, they wanted to put me on so much drugs, they wanted to do a whole bunch of stuff to me, they wanted to, they just wanted to experiment on me. Um, I'm glad that I found people that came into my life, that God put in my life, to figure out how to get me to where I'm at now on this journey. And it only took one person like to say, hey, why don't you try this? And I tried that. And I started, then the one person told me, he said, write down five things that you think God is. And I did. And I'll tell you what, when I wrote down them five things, that was my God. That's who I thought God was. That was what I was going to run with because I created that, that God. And that was my God that I was going to worship and everything else. And then I realized that was my, hey, Holly, how's it going? That was my God that I was worshiping and not the real God that I should have been worshiping. So I started this spiritual journey down the path and everything else. And then I finally let the Holy Spirit come into my life and everything. And God's like, you need to get baptized now. And I accepted God as Jesus Christ, God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And when I accepted that, He says, you need to get baptized. So I went and got baptized. And I did it really quickly, and I told the pastor, I said, if I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm following my, uh, I saw the pastor, I have now, I was back way back, about 13 years ago, I think, or something like that. But the more that I come to find God, the more that I build this relationship with the Lord, the more that I accept Jesus into my life and the Holy Spirit to move with me, and the more I get obedient and everything else, the more I find that the truth is sitting right here in the Bible. And we try to find it everywhere else, and we search everywhere else, and we look at people for it and everything else. And like I said in, in before here a little bit, it was the people that I was looking in and everything else was, I knew they couldn't fix me either. Like I, I knew there was something still missing. And what was missing was the Bible. And I had to get in there, and I had to get in the Word, and I had to get the truth in me. Because once you learn the truth, and as you're reading, and you're praying, and you're letting the Lord come in, then you get to see how you can place it in your life, instead of listening to somebody to tell you how to place it in your life. And because I can tell you how to place it in your life, and you, like I said, you're either going to make that choice to do it or not. The biggest deal is, is when you get that relationship with Jesus, and He shows you how to place it in your life, and He shows you how to live. And the, and the part is that our self stops us from being vulnerable to the Spirit because we look at everything in a worldly view. If we just stop looking and just say, all right, God, you have all of me. Whatever comes next, comes next. Whatever I walk through, I pray I walk through it the way Jesus would walk through it. I pray that I can love that person the way Jesus would love them. 
And like, because of the way that people think we should love is not the way that Jesus loved. Like, the way that people think we should do for the people is not the way that Jesus did for people. And because we go off this worldly view of, oh, this is how you have to love. This is how you have to show love. This is what, you know, we will never, we have to show love the way that Jesus loved. And we will never be able to do that because that's unconditional love. And the closest thing that I've found to unconditional love here on earth in a human form or whatever you want to call it, in a form, is an animal, is a pet, is a dog or whatever. Like, you lock a dog up in a trunk for two weeks, it's going to hop out of there wanting to lick your face. If you lock a person up in that trunk for two weeks, they're going to walk out of there with a tire and iron and they're going to try to chase you down. So, everything that we try to find in this world we'll never find, but everything that we need out of life and everything else is in the Bible, it's in the Lord, it's in Jesus. It's in letting the Holy Spirit move upon you. Uh, like, I just sit here and I think about the lifestyle that we're, I, I shouldn't even be standing here, or sitting here, I guess, I'm not standing here. But I should be sitting here, and I should be happy. I should be none of this. I shouldn't have a wife. I shouldn't have a kid. I shouldn't have nothing. I, I, I should be, I honestly, I can remember. So, whenever we talk about the Bible, too, we're going to have to believe in all this spiritual stuff and everything else. And I'm going to have to believe that you hear from God, and you're going to have to believe that I hear from God. And you're going to have to believe that people, some people might hear from the devil that think they're hearing from God. So, but, and that's why we need to get in the Word. I, I, if anything, lead, I need to lead you back to the Word, to the Word, to the Word, to the Word. Not me, not anybody else, not the little reels that you watch, anything else. If you are not picking up this Bible daily, learning who you are in the Christ, then you're, you're not doing what, like, get to the Bible. So, and I, hope, I pray the Holy Spirit convicts you on that if you're not doing that. But, uh, so, where was I going with that? See, God just took me off that there and, like, make sure you get this part. And I did. So now, where was I? About dog jumping out, love, da, 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 da. where was that guy? Help me out, somebody in there, he's helping me out, not dog, anybody else? Um, <laughs> so by getting in that word and everything else, uh, I learned how to look, oh, I shouldn't be here, and that I am a sinner, and I, he died on the cross for me and everything else, and I shouldn't have none of this, and it's all the blessings that come with it, but then we think that, like, oh, I'm following the word, I should get all these blessings, <laughs> no, don't work that way either, you're not going to get all them blessings, but you get more blessings, in the in the soul, in the in the mind and in the heart and everything else. And every journey that you go through, you see the good and all the bad now. And like you get to walk through life looking at all the bad. Oh, and then loving one another. That's where I was going, the unconditional love, thank you. Um the only person I can unconditional love you is Jesus Christ. Like and then like I said, the closest I come was a dog, my my rock water man, whatever I put that down. I was laying there and I had to put her down. She was only what, almost three years old. She had kidney failure and everything else. And I, I mean, I had tears coming out of my eyes. And I said, I didn't even feel this bad when my mom died. I didn't feel this bad when my wife, or not my wife, my aunt Robin died. I don't feel this bad when my, like, my wife gets hurt or my kid gets hurt. Like, and I'm sitting there thinking, why did I feel this way, God? Why did I feel this way about this dog? And he said, because it was the only thing that came close to loving me the way I love you. And I'm like, I've never put that kind of feelings in a dog. And I looked at my wife and I said, I've never put that kind of feelings into another animal again in my life. I said, if I can't have that same feeling about Jesus Christ, then I'm doing something wrong, man. I mean, in that moment when I laid there, I said, I better be laying here praying to God. And I better be crying that He saved me. And I better be praising Him the way that He needs to be praised. I better be with that with God as much as I was with that dog. Like, you know? That dog went everywhere with me. And I'm like, Man, God, you really shouldn't. He says, yeah, I'm giving it to you so you can do a little sermon on it. I was like, sweet, thank you. But uh, that's not for tonight either. So I pray that you guys get into the Bible. I pray that you guys, because that's the only way, like I said, this is the overcoming class. You want to overcome anything. It's not going to be because of what I'm telling you. It's not going to be because of what anybody preaches. It's not going to be because of the counseling that you're going to. It's going to be because you're going to let the Holy Spirit come into your life. You're going to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior. You're going to get in here and you're going to say, Lord, you can have all of me, everything about me, all my depression, all my anxiety, all my hurts, all my shames, all my guilt, all my love, all my happiness, all my peace, all my joy, every single thing. And I want to start that relationship with you, Lord. And by starting that relationship, it's not going to come from John Hayden. It's not going to come from... Bob, Tom, whoever shoot down the street. It's going to come from the Holy Spirit through the Bible as you're reading His Word. And He's going to say, hey, 
right here's where you're at. Hey, right here I can guide you through this. It's not going to be what we're doing with the people. It's not going to be doing the miracles and the healing and everything else. No, what it's going to be is by us testifying in our story because we're a walking testimony. As we walk through life, we get to show them. But yeah, and the more closer that we get obedient to God, then we get to do the miracles too as well. But we, God, we cannot put God in a box. Like, oh, and I was going to say about that spiritual deal there too. I can remember when I first came to the Lord when I went down and got baptized and everything else. I hope you guys are catching up because I don't like to slow down because the Holy Spirit just moves. I want to get it all out there. And then I can just relax as a flesh. But uh, when I first got saved, uh, God showed me a lot of stuff. He gave me a lot of visions and everything else. Because I, like I said, I hate going or whatever. So He had showed me, but I was trying to doubt that He was real. Because I was not going to go down this path unless He did. And he says, I want to show you, John. And he did. He, I, I, he, he, I can remember going with an angel across the lake of fire. And I could see everybody down there streaming and burning. And I said, this I don't deserve this, dude. Put me in that fire and bring somebody else out. And he said, no, I can't do that. And I said, yes, you can. I said, just one person, maybe? I wanted to do it for all of them. I said, one? Can I do it for one? Like, nope. And then I can remember being in a lion's den and everything else. He was showing me that. And I lifted up that lion's head. And I said, just bite me off right again. Just crush me. Which is why I don't want to. Like, I'm not worthy of this at all. Like, leave me die, man. Then he kept on going. I, I can remember seeing his robe and... I can remember touching the back of it, just the whiteness of it. And my journey with God, my relationship with the Lord, is more powerful than anything here on this earth. I could care less about anything else on this earth than God says you can't do that. And I said, why, Lord? He says, because more people need this. And I said, God, it's right here. It's right here. It's all right here. Like everything I read. I didn't even know the Bible when I first came in here and everybody's going, you're preaching out of the Bible. I said, no, I'm not, dude. I don't even know what you're talking about. And they said, well, then you must have a pretty good relationship. And I said, I do. I'm growing on that. I do have a relationship with the Lord now. I said, because that was the only person that ever laid down their life. And I had boys that said they would lay down their life for me. They would die for me. And not a single one of them did. Once I quit drinking, once I quit doing what we were supposed to be doing and everything else, and they, as soon as I did that, they were gone. They were gone. I had family that said they would lay down their life for me. <laughs> no. I did. God gave me a whole new family. God gave me a whole new life. He could, of all the old past and all the new became new. And that's, that kind of scared me too in a sense because I was like, I don't know. I'm not worthy, God. I'm not worthy of none of this. I'm not. I'm still not. I'm not. And he gets home by my grace, John, you're saved. I said, I know, God. I'm like, why? Why do you wake me up and choose me every day? Why do you still give me breath every day? Why do you let me walk every day in this life with you? Because I don't deserve it. And this is because I love you. Because I love you. What a father that is. And every person out there can have that unconditional love by him. Every person can feel that feeling. They search in all the wrong places. They're out there trying to figure it out in every different place. But I'm telling you, it's right here. It's right here. His word is the truth. And I, I'll tell you what, everything I've been through, everything I went through, I said, this don't make sense to me. And it did it at the time, because I didn't want it to make sense to me. Now every time I read, and I pray before I read, and everything else, and I get in there, and I fall in that, I say, God, just show me what you need to show me. And He talks to me like it was just nothing. Yet. Like He's right there beside me. And the, I'm telling you, the, the relationship, the oh. I just, I'm getting giggly because I know how much I love my Lord. Like I know how much that He does for me. And it's like, I can't ever repay it. I can't ever repay it. Nobody here can repay it. And He says, all I want you to do is live your life through me. Show me you. Show Jesus through you. And I'm like, I'm not even doing that. You're doing that for me. And he says, childlike faith. Be a kid. Be a kid. <laughs> how is that possible, God? How's that possible? Ain't I supposed to be doing the hard ground yet? He says, you've been doing that. You've been doing the hard ground. You're still falling. You never gave up. Da, 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 da. Like, it, it is. It's like, seek his kingdom first. I mean, I was seeking my kingdom forever, man. I wanted to be wealthy. I was. I, got, I'm, I was making some big bucks. I was probably making about two grand a week. And then I come from the poor, too. Like, I mean, I'm living on the streets. Like, so, I had it all. And he says, no. Whose kingdom are you seeking? I said, well, I've been seeking my kingdom since I was broken on the streets. And now I got this. Like, I'm happy-go-lucky. And he's like, did you get it all up? And I'm like, no. Yeah. 
<laughs> he goes, did you give it all to me? He goes, all right, do it. I'm like, are you kidding me? He goes, yep, do it. And I was like, all right, Lord. And uh, as we seek his kingdom, I'm telling you, if you seek his kingdom before all, and you know without a shadow of a doubt, 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 shadow of a doubt that you're seeking his kingdom, because, I mean, there's some loopholes and everything else that we can do in our fleshly ways, like, because uh, when he sometimes... Oh yeah, I'm, see, I'm going to church on Sunday. I'm praying every night and everything. I see I'm seeking His kingdom. Can I have a million dollars now? No, that's not how that works. It's literally seeking His kingdom through everything, ups and downs, everything else. It's about showing the joy, the peace, and the love, the fruit. Compare the fruits if you really let Him in and you really do what He wants you to do. And uh, and if you don't know what He wants you to do, again, it's right here, not for me. Uh, it's by your lifestyle that you live. And uh, Kurt just texted me we can get pilots. All right, so I, we'll talk, yeah, you got to find one. What are we talking about pilots? Yeah, I got something exciting coming up. I think I'll talk to Pastor Marta about it. So I'll keep you guys all up to pilots. Thinking, how oh, should I? Nah, I better not say too much. With the pilots are going to be used out the words. Just so you know. Nah, nah, but. Um, <laughs> But no, I do. I love you guys. I want to make sure that you guys are on there. Romans 10 9. And I'm like, you guys got to get there, whatever. Um, and you got to welcome the Holy Spirit in daily. Yeah? Let Him come in. Let Him come in your life. Let Him guide you. Let Him love you. Walk with Jesus. Let the Lord convict you. Like, I mean, let Him confront you, man. Because if you don't change, nothing changes if nothing changes. And really, it shouldn't even be us walking in this world. It should be Him walking through us in this world. And the way the pastor said, like, he's shot in that light. It's not us shining that light. It's Him shining that light through us. So what are we shining? What are we letting Him shine through us? And are we shining the light or is He shining the light? Uh, so if you want to start come, overcoming all your stuff, like I had a person that asked me the other day, like I'm ready I'm ready to start this New Year's off right. I want to just get rid of all this garbage. I don't want to have this miserableness no more. There we go. All you do is pray up my Bible. All you do is get in prayer. All you do is get in worship. All you do is get in praise. All you have to do is live your life for Him. And it'll all change. We all have that. And we all had that choice. We all had that knowledge of, all right, what do I need to do? It's not what I tell you to do. It's not what anybody else is getting. It's about what's in this Bible. It's about the truth. If you just follow the truth, the truth will set you free. It's, it's really that simple. It's really that common sense and everything else. Uh, Romans 10, 90. You confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And you believe in your heart. And God has raised him from the dead. You will be saved. And when you confess that with your mouth, it's not just Lord over a little bit of your life. It's Lord over everything in your life. And I'm praying the Holy Spirit right now, when you just heard that, I'm praying the Holy Spirit really convicts you on that. To really open up your eyes on that. Am I really giving them all my life? Am I really making them Lord over my life? Am I really giving up control over my life? Am I really doing what I need to be doing for the Lord? Because we can always be doing more. But only by His grace we are saved. So it's not by your works. It's not by nothing else like that. It's by His grace. Um, and are we loving one another? Not the way that we think we should love them. Not the way that we feel like they should be. Do we just love them? Just right in our heart when we look at them, do we love them? Or do we judge them? Or do we gossip? Or do we say something behind their backs? Or do we whatever. Did we love them the way that Jesus would love them? So, um, I'm going to close this out in prayer. If you guys missed whenever you go back here, it'll be on there. I don't know how long it'll be on there But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed tonight. Um, like I said, it's not about what I tell you. It's about what this Word tells you and what the truth tells you. And it's about the choices that you want to make. I, like I said, I can't make you do nothing. I can't tell you what to do. I can't. All I can do is show you through me, what my life was and where I come from and how Jesus played in my life and uh, all the miracles that he done. And everything that I found, not a human person could fix me. It had to be Jesus Christ that I let into my life. So, Heavenly Father, I just pray that you just touch every soul out there, every heart and every mind that's out there, God. I just pray that they will let you in your, into their life, God, and I pray that they can start that relationship with you today, God. I pray that you guide them, that you show them, that you convict them, that you love them, that you just teach them, God, that it's right here at their fingertips that their whole life can change right now. The old can become new, and all things will become new in you, Christ. 
awe and in love and the joy and the peace and the happiness that we get to have throughout every day of the week and every month that we could have. God, I thank you for that. But I know that I was supposed to die and I wasn't supposed to be forgiven until I accepted you, Lord, because you took away all my guilt, all my shame. And you showed me how to love. And I thank you for loving me, Lord. And I pray that they can start that relationship and they can build that relationship upon you. In Jesus' is mighty name, Amen. Love you all. I hope you guys all enjoyed. It's not even about enjoying. I hope you guys all got something. I hope you guys can take a piece and just run with it, pray about it, and let the Lord move you the way that He needs to move you, not the way that John Hayne needs to move you, not the way that Bob Tom or Sue needs to move you, but the way that Jesus needs to move you. And I pray that you walk in the faith and that you do what God wants you to do and you seek His kingdom before you seek your own kingdom. Jesus, mighty name. Amen. Love you guys.